Hello everyone, this is Eric Bach with Navigation Electronics. Today we're going to discuss the Trimble TDC-150 GNSS handheld receiver and how to set it up with the new collector for ArcGIS. So the first thing you need to do is go out to the Google Play Store and make sure you have installed the new Esri collector for ArcGIS app along with Trimble Mobile Manager. That software needs to be running version 2.3. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to run Trimble Mobile Manager. And the first thing it's going to do is want you to sign in with a Trimble ID, or also known as the TID. If you do not have one, they're free. You just need to click on this Create New Trimble ID button at the bottom here, and you go out and fill out information about yourself. Once you have that, you will enter your email address and your password, and then sign in to the application. All right, now that we've signed in, uh, we're going to use this Trimble Mobile Manager as a middleware app to configure our real-time corrections along with any datums that we may need to match our GIS data and GEOID model support for MSL uh, elevations. So on the home screen here, we have three lines. It's the menu icon, or also known as the hamburger icon. We're going to click on that and go down to GNSS configuration. Now, this pops up with this. GNSS correction source. And what I'm going to do here is pop up on the screen a few of the real-time networks that NEI has in its territory. You can see here I have a lot of ones here with IP address or internet address and ports. And then at the bottom I have one for RTX. I guess I need to add in one here for SBAS. But anyway, these are some of our local real-time networks in Louisiana. Some are network based where you need an in-trip login and password and some like the state of Alabama their direct access so you you have to pick the port or the town where that core station is or that that network station is and you got to make sure you pick a port uh, feel free to reach out to your NEI salesperson for more information regarding these networks in these different states okay so here we are back at this GNSS configuration if you want to use SBAS corrections you would set this up like we have set here. Auto, as far as our correction source. GNSS output, we want to keep that same as source. And then if you want to see mean sea level elevations, you'll need to choose a geoid model. In this case, I have the most recent one set called geoid 18. Now, if we want to use Trimble RTX, this is a paid service. They have several different levels of accuracy. You would pay for that upgrade, and inside the software, inside the TDC-150, there's an app called GNSS Loader that you can then load that RTX code into. We have a video on that on our website as well. However, the one thing we do need to change is this GNSS output. We would choose Select from List, and then you would need to pick the output reference frame you want your GIS data in. So RTX, by default, outputs an ITRF 2014. So what we want to do in order to make this line up with our GIS data, some of y'all run uh, on the NAT83 2011 datum, you would want to set this up. If you don't, your data will all be shifted over a few feet. So we definitely want to set up that reference frame, and then you want to set up a geoid model. Now, since we're in here, let's click on geoid model. There's a bunch in the list. The first time you're in here, you would have to go down and sometimes it'll make you download the correct geoid. So if I had geoid 18, I would click on it and it would automatically download onto my device. Now, I've heard a few people say, hey, I'm missing a geoid. Like, I'm not seeing geoid 18, or I'm not seeing, in my case here, I don't see geoid 12B CONUS for continental U.S. What I'm going to do here is just kind of show you real quick how to go and grab that. You would go to the Internet, Google Chrome, on the device. And then when the web page pops up, you would just type in Trimble Geoid Model. So Trimble Geoid Downloads. When you do that, it comes up with a web page. I like to pick the top one here. It may be different for other people, but it's going to come up with this GGF Trimble DocuShare. I click on that. That brings up the Trimble website, and it's going to list all kind of geoid models. Once we're in there, we're going to pick the model we want and go browse for that file and then download it. So if you wanted geoid 18, you would click on it. And we're looking for CONUS, our continental US. That's what that is. I already have that one on my list, so let's just do geoid 12B. I would also want the CONUS, and geoid 12B has this combined CONUS. You would click on that to download. 
I can just click on it real quick. I already have it downloaded. So the next thing we do is we have to go put it in a in a correct folder. So on the 150, there's an application called File Manager. So I'm going to click on All Apps when this pops up. Click on File Manager. And then what we're going to do is browse to the Downloads folder. And we're going to grab that geoid file and move it into the geodata folder. So I will click on download. Now on other operating system, if you're running the TDC 600 and you need to do this, they have a little bit different application to move the files around, but it's, it's pretty similar. So I'm just going to go down and select this geoid file. So there's the g12bus.ggf. So the geoid files have that .ggf extension. And then what I have to do here on the 150 is I have to go up to the parent folder and I need to put this in the geodata folder. So I'm just going to basically tap on geodata, highlight it, it opens it up, and then I click the three dots at the bottom and I say copy selection here. And it's basically going to copy that geoid file from the download folder into the geodata folder. There's probably another way you can do this. I just found that this is what works for me. So that's going to move over to this folder. Once it's done, that GGF file will then be available in the geodata folder. And then if I restarted my application, it would pop up inside of Trimble Mobile Manager. So if you are missing that file, that's what we call how to sideload a geoid model. All right, let me get Mobile Manager back up. And, and just a note too, typically when you copy those in there, the file will end up, instead of alphabetical, it ends up at the bottom of the screen. Now, since I loaded it, I have to restart the program in order to see it, but uh, it would pop in there. So I'm just going to stick with geoid 18 in this case. I just wanted to show you all how to sideload that file. Now. This is for RTX, what we have here. So this screenshot right here, auto for my correction source. GNSS output select from list, NAT83 2011, and a geoid 18 for mean sea level. And now finally, setting up for a real-time network or a VRS. I'm going to choose custom local. And I'm going to have a new set of options here, your protocol. So for the states that require a username and password, you use NTRIP. For example, for Alabama, I may use this, well, I have to use this direct where I just type in an IP address and a port. It doesn't require the username and password. We'll stick with NTRIP. Since I'm in Louisiana, I have my server URL set up for LSU's GolfNet. We're going to be doing a webinar next week, and we'll talk about the Florida network as well. But if you, if you just rewind the video, you'll see the IP address and ports that you need in order to to set up some of these other sites. Now, below that is mount points. And each network has their own variety of how they set up mount points. LSU has quite a bit. If I were to click that list, I'm not going to do it, but there's a bunch in there. I just pick the one that best suits my needs for what I'm wanting to collect with. If you have any questions, just reach out to your NEI salesperson, and they'll be able to help you out. So now we're back at that GNSS source reference frame. You can keep that at NAT83-2011. That's what our network is outputting as, so I'm going to leave that alone. Some areas, like California, they have a lot of tectonic movement. They have a customized epic, so they actually have to click that button and choose custom epic. Below that, you have your username, password, and then finally, our last three that we just covered with RTX, we have that GNSS output. I want my data in NAT83-2011, so I'm going to set that there, and then I have my GUID model. So next thing we're going to do is go back over to the menu. And then we're going to go to position source. So the Trimble TDC-150 is an integrated receiver. So that's how we want to have this set up here in the screen. I'm going to click on the menu again and go home. Now, from here, if you wanted to check to make sure everything's set up right, you would hit the connect to receiver button. Now, before you run collector, you'd make sure to go to the home button. And you need to make sure to slide off that connect to integrated receiver. Then we're going to pop over to the new collector for ArcGIS. And we're just going to configure two things. And then that will be about it for this session today. All right, now that collector's kind of fired up here, we're going to go into the profile icon. That is the outline of the person in the top right corner here. I'm going to click on the profile. And then once it pops up, we're going to go down to the location provider. So I'm going to click on the word provider integrated. And 
we're going to keep this set up just like this. So we have integrated, connected, but we have this antenna height here. So if you click on the three vertical dots here, we're going to hit those, and then we can click on details and enter the antenna height. Now, the TDC-150 has a few options. You can either hold the 150 in your hand and use the virtual pole application. You can set up the TDC-150 on a monopole, and then you would be able to enter that height. That would be if you want to get good vertical without an external antenna, you would punch that in. Or if you had a two-meter pole with an external antenna, you would type in that value. So if I wanted to do that, we'll just hit one point, I think my monopole I have set right now at 1.3. I'm going to hit the back button once that's configured. And that's really all you have to do for the location provider. And then the next thing is your profile. Now, uh, I'm not going to go into the profile. I already have that set up in other videos. But for um, anything with NAT83, you would just want to make sure that your profile is set properly. So the way I would have configured RTX was for NAT83. And the way I set up my real-time network here in Louisiana was NAT83. And basically, here are my specifications for this profile. It is NAT83 Corrections 2011. The coordinate system of the map is Web Mercator. And I'm using the horizontal datum transformation. It's usually the top one in the list, but you definitely want to double check. Mine is the WGS 1984 EPIC ITRF 08 to the NAT83 2011 transformation. All right, that's all we have. Check out some of our other videos coming online and some of our new webinars coming up. We appreciate you watching and have a great day.